Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 animation series. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at how we can attach an item to a socket inside our game for our character. Now, in the last video, we did take a look at sockets, we explained what they're used for, and we also showed you how to set one up, along with manipulating that, its size, rotation, and scale, using a preview mesh. However, at this point, this cube that we've put in the player character's hand is just a preview mesh and nothing else. We won't be able to see this within our game, and it's not going to move with the animations of our character. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to use that socket that you've created and attach a static mesh to it. Now once again, you're going to be using this kind of thing in all kinds of different animation scenarios. So for example, you've got a player character that's going to be animated with either a weapon, such as a sword, a gun, or something like that. You want it to move with those animations. And that's what we're going to be showing you how to do today. So the way that we're going to do this is within the character blueprint. Now, if you want a little bit more information on what a character blueprint is, I advise you go ahead and check out my animation, uh, sorry, my blueprint series for that. Now, we've got a blueprint character within the animation starter pack, which uses the skeletal mesh and the skeleton for the character that we've just added the socket to. Now, by default, it's going to use the one from the starter content, which does not have the socket. So having said that, what we need to do is within our scene, we just need to do a couple of things. So first things first, we need to delete the character which is in here. So if you see the character, select him and then just delete him. And then what you also want to do is override the default pawn class for this level by going to window checking world settings, set your game mode override to third person game mode, and then with your character blueprint selected in the main animation starter pack folder, press this little arrow here to use that as your default pawn class. When you go ahead and press play, what you should have now is a character which you're going to be able to walk left and right with and notice he is looking like he's trying to hold something and that's all defined within the animation starter pack animation blueprint that we've got already. So if we open up this character blueprint, we can show you how to put a static mesh in here and then we're also going to show you how to attach it to the mesh. So first things first, let's head over to the viewport so you can see exactly what you're working with. By default, you should have just a few components and nothing else. You should have a capsule component, arrow component, mesh, camera, player character, and character movement. Now, what I'm going to do is add a static mesh component in here. And the way I'm going to do this is just go to add component in the top left hand corner, add a static mesh, and just give this the name cube. Now you'll notice we've added this in, but there's nothing there. And that is because there is no static mesh in there, just a component for it. There's no information. So under static mesh in the details panel on the right hand side, go ahead and add in a 1M underscore cube. And this is going to add this cube into our character blueprint. Now, if you remember in the last video, with our socket, we actually scaled down this cube and we put it into place. So as soon as I parent this to the mesh, get that socket information, it is going to go exactly where I want it to. So what I've got to do then is first things first, parent this to the mesh, which is essentially going to attach it. And then I've also got to parent it to that socket so that it gets the information and moves with that specific bone. So. With the cube and the components panel in the top left, just click it, drag it, and then hover over mesh. And this is the skeletal mesh for your character. You'll notice it says drop here to attach cube to mesh. And what this is going to do is it's going to essentially parent it to the mesh and it's going to move with the mesh. However, it's still too big and we need to parent it to that socket and get the socket information. With the cube still selected, go over to your details panel 
and then just press the little magnifying glass underneath parent socket. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to either socket it to one of the bones or to a socket. Now you'll notice it says hand underscore R socket, that's the one that I've created and your proper sockets are always going to be at the top of this list. Select that and notice straight away it's going to scale it down to the size of our preview mesh. It's also going to get the rotation and the placement and try and place it in the arm. Now it is a little bit offset and that is just down to the fact that with your preview mesh, when you was putting that in it was in a different pose. So what you're going to have to do is within here, just sort of move it around a little bit, move it up, down, left or right. But notice, even when you do that, it's still going to move with the idle animation. So you've got no issues there. What I'm going to do is just turn off my grid snapping and then just put this into place in that player's hand. Just like that. It's not perfect, but that is close enough for now. So now if I go ahead and compile this, press play, if we walk around you can see that the player is holding that cube in his hands there. So you can see sort of through the body there that is holding it in his hand and it's going to move with it. If you can't see it perfectly just press alt tab to free up the mouse, press eject to free up the camera and you can see that it is still in his hand. And as you can see, hopefully, that this sort of technique, this kind of thing for attaching items to a socket is going to be handy if you're working with weapons such as swords, guns, and all kinds of good stuff. But for now, hopefully, you have enjoyed this little section on skeletons, sockets, and attaching. And in the next video, we are going to be moving to looking at the animation clips in a little bit more detail and the interface for that. Anyway guys, once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.